rhubarb. Rhubarb, rhubarb, 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 rhubarb.
peanut butter. Oh, and if you don't mind doing mine. Three, three bananas. Yeah. Sorry? The food needs to be right down now. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So the dairy products, we could be double cream. Why am I not allowed to change a bag of tobacco for 10 cigarettes instead of 20? Because I don't want to smoke that much and I'm going to make roll-ups out of the 10 cigarettes so I can get more food. Charlie, cool. you've been showing off. That's a bit insulting, Jerry. How dare you? Put by the bottom. Housemates are reminded that they're not allowed to touch the diary on camera. You've gone down there and I saw you. I'm sharp as a button, I'll tell you. I ordered three bananas. I ordered three bananas. No, 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 the first person to be evicted from the Big Brother house is Shabnam. I knew it. Oh, I knew it. There we go. We got a week. So, four arrivals and an eviction. But what impact have these developments had on the house? Let's find out with Little Brother's big news through my legs. <laughs> Kill you with the news. No, because you will do it. Uh, now, it's no secret that Charlie, Ziggy and Chanel haven't always seen eye to eye to eye, but at eight minutes past midnight on Saturday, they were playing the pipe to Peter. What are we going to do? Let's take a look. You know what? It's, we've got new people here. Why don't we, you know, we all, everyone start a fresh start, you know? You know, we're, we're, we're all good people. Come here. You know, who could do this? Take a step back. Yeah, other people make, you know, mm. be in there and, and mm. argue. I'd like to say that I'm going to start fresh with Charlie from, from tonight onwards. Um, she came up and apologised to me today for things that have been said throughout the week. Me? And, and Chanel. Sometimes it's, you know, you don't want to burn your bridges with everyone because these people are here to help you and we're all here to help each other. OK. Good start. However, at 11 p.m. that evening, Chanel already seemed to be having second thoughts. Take a look. Do you know what? I, I've said to her now that I'll have a fresh start with her, and I've tried my best to be polite to her and try my best to act like I can have a fresh start, but I just know what kind of person she's, and I can't be nice to that kind of person. I agree with you. Have you seen how much she's changed like that? Yeah, she's so... Uh, that's all. She's adapted to the situation. I'll say it in a nice word. No, fresh start means fresh start, right? I know she's annoying, but let's go, yeah, fresh start, fresh start. I don't trust her, though. That fresh start's not going to work. Uh, at 3.09pm yesterday, new boys Brian, Liam, Jonathan and Billy were told they had to learn to perform the disco favourite YMCA. Genius. Uh, as the Big Brother Village people in order to win a luxury shopping budget for themselves. Let's take a look. <laughs> Does anyone else find that image of Liam already etched into the, like, the deepest recesses of the it's most terrifying policeman I've ever seen? Uh, they passed the task and won their own lux luxury shopping budget. Now, at 5.14 yesterday evening, Ziggy tried to catch a sly 40 winks behind the bathtub in the living room. After three minutes, Big Brother tried to wake him with an alarm, much to the delight of the other house. Oh, is that him this morning? Yeah. All right, I've got a No matter how stupid you dance, Carol will always outdo you, isn't it? Uh, that was Little Brother's Big News. <laughs> Coming up, public evicting number one, uh, Shabnam, is here. And if you thought there were only 15 living organisms in the house, you were sadly wrong. Take a look at those. Now, take a look at those. The beautiful Kim and Aggie will be quite literally dishing the dirt on the housemates after the break. See you in four.
Well, that's ever so nice of you. Thank you ever so much. Welcome back. It's day 19. The time is 1.05. Still to come, psychologist Dr Funky reveals the scale of intellect in the house. Believe me, you'll be shocked, i.e. there is some. But first, she was in the house for 17 days. That's 384 hours. Or, if my uh, memory serves me correctly... <laughs> I'll really get off the altar queue. Uh, 23,070 minutes. She didn't cry once, but she talked about getting famous too many times to mention, and she ate her body weight in peanut butter, or thereabouts. But on Friday night, she was evicted, and our cameras were there to follow Shapnam's return to her real world, if there is such a thing. The first person to be evicted from the Big Brother house is Shapnam! <laughs> I'm so excited. Come on, Shabnam! You're the first out. Yes. Bit of a bummer. I'm not surprised. I think I got on a lot of people's nerves. In a good way. Ladies and gentlemen, Shabnam! Thank you! Hi, thank you. Peter from the Daily Star. Uh, you've gutted that you're out now, four blokes have gone in. Liam was cute. What a shame. Who really annoyed you most in the house? Ziggy annoyed me, but in a nice way. Thank you. Oh, they're sweet, they're clapping. They're so sweet, they're clapping with me, come on. <laughs> I'm so grateful, I just feel so overwhelmed. I love you, mwah. Uh, she's here now with us, please welcome Shabnam. <laughs> You're scaring me! <laughs> oh, I don't mean to. How are you? Really good, how are you? Nice to see you. Sit down over Thank there. Thank you. And answer my questions in a succinct manner. I will try um, my very best. Now then, have you, have you found your journey back to reality since Friday, Shannon? Really good, really exciting. A um, little bit overwhelming, but overwhelming's always good. You said you sort of went in there for the package, uh, not really knowing what the package is, but just the little package of things that happen to you when you come out. Um, has it been what you expected it to be since you came out? It's been mad. I expected madness. Um, what did you expect? Frenzy, hysteria, madness. Um, I try not to expect anything too much, um, and I know that's come across in a different way. Um, it's best to have no expectations, because they can only lead to disappointments. Anything yeah. in there is a bonus. And my journey and my time in the Big Brother house was really, really good. 81.4% of people voted you out. Why do you, why do you think you got evicted? Because I'm annoying. I mean, yeah, but you know what? I mean, it wasn't like it was a pantomime booing. It wasn't like a. I mean, to be fair, I don't know why you kept dancing outside. That's I gonna, turned them into that, like, cheers. That like freaked me out as well. Like, but after a while, it was like, what are you doing? Just go now, come on. But at the same time, it wasn't. There was no vitriol in the booing like there is sometimes. You know, it was. It was. It was kind of cool. But why? Why do you think 81.4% of people voted you out? I think because they thought I was too much and I was too chatty and I was too annoying. I may have come across as a little bit arrogant, but I'm not arrogant. It's just that I'm confident and I wanted to have a really, really good time in there. And I'd rather have had two weeks of having a really good time and a blast mm. than another two weeks where I would have started to feel miserable or unhappy. How's people's reaction been to you since you've been out? Actually, good. That's really good. good. They know that I talk a lot, um, but it's been really good. I tried to turn those booze into cheers have when you, I got evicted. Have you, I saw that. Uh, it, it went on for a while. Um, have you picked up on, on, on the whole Charlie thing and how people have reacted to Charlie? And you were kind of quite close with Charlie. You bonded with Charlie very, you know, a, a great deal. Do you think that might have had an impact on your popularity in the house? It could have. Um, I don't think anyone in there has built a friendship yet, because that takes time. But to survive in there and to get on in there, you need to know who you get on with. And me and Charlie got on because I think we're from similar walks of life. Um, we've got a similar sense of humour. There are similarities. And that's why when we clashed, it was big clashes. Well, you picked up on one thing. I don't know if it was last week or week before, and you said that this house is the most fractured house. You know, no one's, like, you don't really have friends in here. Everyone's playing their own yes. game. And that's, like... I agree with you. I think I've never seen it like that before, to the point where people are even like have their own shopping budget. Was, was that noticeable in there that it, the people are not really out for themselves as such, but the groups aren't really forming and bonding yet? Everyone will have a great laugh and a conversation, and then there'll be an argument two minutes after. Then they'll talk, and then there'll be another argument over silly, silly little things. Mm -hmm. And in terms of Charlie, we got on and we had some really good times. 
but I wouldn't say it was a friendship. Nobody's got a friendship in there. You can't because you don't know people that well enough. Okay. You're getting to know them and the different sides of them. That's a very honest answer. Okay, eight pounds in the shopping budget. You ordered three bananas. Or we're not even going to go there. Forty-five p. Uh, organic white bread, milk, drinking chocolate, a bag of a bar of white chocolate, bourbon biscuits, baby wipes, chocolate milkshake, peanut butter. Did you know you were going, or was this just a stupid order? It was a stupid order, but I suspected I was going, but I would have ordered that anyway. Even if I wasn't up for eviction, I would have ordered that, and I would have had to have, in Trace's words, deal with it. Mm -hmm. OK, now, anyone watching over the last uh, couple of weeks would realise you were closer to one housemate than the other. You. Take a look at this. <laughs> Are you bored? Come in here. We're having fun in here. <laughs> it's the most amazing journey, and it's just starting. I want to express myself, you know, with me, I don't want barriers, I'm, I'm me. I've got the warmth, I've got energy about me, people feel that. I just want to have fun. This looks oh, good, and then that looks different, yeah, and then yeah, that looks like something heavy. else. I'm not actually posing at all. See how I'm so intelligent, man. She said they brought my whole face out. Even that eyeshadow's gorgeous. I just know I'm charming. Well, I like to think I'm charming. I hope I'm charming you right now. I love Barbie girls. Oh, I'm naturally attractive, OK? Try not to break the lens. <laughs> Oh, I love you. Mwah. I'm just looking at how sexy I am. Sorry. Myra. I'm not going to lie to you. Of course I want to, to, to experience fame. I want the little package that comes with it. All because of me. <laughs> so, just to recap, while we were watching that, she said, oh, that comes across like I'm vain. I'm not vain. And then the next, the next clip was, I'm so attractive. I love it. Um, I was joking. I was probably feeling like... You know, I had emotions all over the place that day and I was looking at myself thinking, yeah, this looks good, this looks good. Well, the show kind of attracts people that are vain. There's a certain, yeah. uh, uh, you know, vanity aspect to it. But who's the most vain in the house, do you think, now? I think everyone's got an element to them. Um, and especially having mirrors around everywhere, it doesn't help. But I will admit, you know, I did, like, look at myself a few times... Well, more than a few times, by the way. Really? Of that. You? Really? Yeah, oh. yeah, flick my hair a bit. But um, everyone is. And it's, it's a good thing to take an interest in yourself, but not... Too much of an interest. Do you know what I loved? We, we've, we were going to show a clip, we don't have as much time, is a clip of you in the sort of jogging montage. And your outfits when you jogged was hilarious. You never wore, like, an, a sporty outfit. You wore, like, a feather boa when you were jogging. Yeah. As well, which I love. <laughs> I go to dance class that way. Not in the feather boa, but in my dress and leggings. OK. Now, what plans now? I mean, because you said, you, you know, you want to get the package, so what are you going to do? Enjoy every minute of it. Enjoy everything. Every moment lasts a certain time, and I just want to make the most of it. Any specifics? No, I just want to be happy with my experience. I'm happy with my experience in the house as well, so I'm really, really happy about that. Oh, OK, lastly, who do, you, who do you think will win? Who do you want to win? Ooh, Carol deserves to, I think, um, because she puts a lot of people before her. Tracy is just original and just herself. Um, good luck to all of them, but my heart is with Carol because I think she's very, very compassionate. Brilliant. OK, you're back later on. You can ask your questions to Shabnam for now. Shabnam, everyone! Thank you. Now, before we go any further... You talked a lot about being a performer. Now, do you remember the career orientation test you filled in before you went into the house? Vaguely, yes. OK. Yeah. We, we got the results in, and you might be quite surprised with our findings, because it seemed your perfect job, in fact, the job you're destined to be, is a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, we're going to gauge the credibility of the test. Me milking and, a cow. Well, Can you just imagine that? We don't need to imagine it, because we're going to see it this week. We're going to send you off on an afternoon this week. To, to milk some cows. Oh, I'd right? love to do that. Oh, yeah, let oh, me. That's going to happen. That'd be another experience. On, we're going to see how you, uh, how you get on uh, at home on tomorrow's show. Thank you very much. Shabnam, everyone. Thank you. Now, she was often accused of not helping with the cleaning, but she wasn't on her own. Take a look at this. The cloths are filthy. She's putting the toilet paper on the table where people put their feet. If someone's got something disgusting on their feet, like Impa Tiger, then we'll get it everywhere else. No one's too good to not clean. If her cleaners of your house was here, they wouldn't they wouldn't have figured sufficient. We need to clear it up immediately because we'll start getting ants. Air freshener. Something to wipe the windows with. Oh, we'd like some wipes as well. We have no oven cleaner. We don't have any spray. Also, uh, I don't know if I can use that detergent. 
because uh, I may come out in a rash. To clean or not to clean, that is the question. Joining me now are two ladies, know a thing or two about germs, bacteria, and all things icky. Just as well, they are shining towels of virtue. It's Kim and Aggie. Hello, my love. How are you? Howdy, well, okay. thanks. Cool. OK, now, with the exception of Carol, the others only seem to clean as punishment, ladies. So they have the means to clean. They're just lacking the motivation, is that right? Yes. Why is it's that? It's not as if they don't have the time, is it? No. Couldn't have any more time. Well, I don't understand. And Laura says clean? that she likes to clean, but does she ever? Laura doesn't clean. Mm. Tracy is a cleaner, I believe. Yeah, exactly. She? OK. So, um, how often should they be cleaning and what sort of cleaning should they be doing in that house? Well, they should... You, you clean day. as you go. All You've got time. 15 people yes, in that house. Bodies. A lot of stinky. Mm -hmm. Unless you clean as you go... All You're going to be, and they're not doing they're lazy beggars. <laughs> they are. They're lazy <laughs> don't give over. And the point is that they don't clean as they go. They, they look a bit smelly in there now, scratching their mm. oars. I mean there's a lot of scratching. <laughs> they need to get off their oh. beer back south and do something. When you don't clean as you go, do you like does it like a, a, a well, you, a a you accumulate yes. bacteria. Yeah. You accumulate utter filth. And then it gets really bad and you can't face it. OK, this is what we need you to do. We snuck into the Big Brother house in the dead of night, collected swabs from several locations for you to oh, test. Heaven help you. You've got the results of the test, yes, right, Aggie? Yes, have indeed. So, can you talk us through? What, what, what are the bits that are maybe just a little bit dirty? A and... little bit dirty. You know, the, the bin, uh, the coffee table's not so good. Which is strange, because you. I would always think, when I put my hand near a bin, I think, oh, I must wash my hand. A bin's... Yes. A bin's you always think well, that's, that's where you're putting rubbish. Yeah. But actually, you know, rubbish is clean until it sits there for a long time right. and gets smelly and the bacteria grow, yeah. OK. But there are... Yeah, we're all serious. OK, what that? about the places with uh, lots of bacteria and a couple of nasty bugs? What are we looking at there? Well, we're talking about um, the, the dishcloth is the very, oh. very worst. Dear Lord. Absolutely. There are four types of disease-causing organisms in there. No! There are. There are. It's disgusting. OK, we're going to get onto the dishcloth a little well, bit more. It's been a few right. weeks, you know. I know, mm. but I don't... Serious. I, are we going to get onto the dishcloth in a minute? But I don't... That just appalls me. Um, what about the garden toilet or the sofa yeah. and, and dust on the floor? Is dust on the floor a bad thing? Oh, yes, it is. I mean, we're probably talking things like toenail clippings, there'd be pubic hair... Oh, there'd no! There'd be skin sc scales, there'd be dandruff, all sorts of sweat. You know, well, never mind the floor. These girls are sitting around Nicholas oh. Nicholas! I know. Uh, now, I'm now, trying not to have a look, but no, they're, they're no, parading in you, the stuff. Yes, you poor man. feel sorry for you. But this is the whole point. Let's not be here being all silly. Mm. We, we lose bum hairs. Now, we, now stop. Don't, don't sit there giving me the nonsense. We, we lose... We lose. No, you do. We get the, under the arms, on the body. These girls have got no knickers on, dear, sitting on chairs. What are they losing? you telling me their bum hairs are going everywhere? Well, then, well, that, well, my bum hairs fall off, don't yours? The coffee table, people with their feet up, Ziggy pooking his Playing with his feet. All yeah. that toe jam landing on the oh, coffee table. Oh, Aggie, it's no. It's nice. There'll be months and months of it. They're taking okay. the life in the house, those dirty beggars in there. You know, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Would it be safer to say that they're in more danger, say, eating off the coffee table with, with all the feet and everything? Definitely. Everything. You know, they'd be safer eating off the toilet seat or the... Or the kitchen bin. No, they would be. They would. Because the strange thing is, I was they reading, be, reading research notes, and um, urine is sterile. Is that right? When it leaves the body, it is. Yes, it's sterile. That's extraordinary. Okay. Mm. Um, the dishcloth, obviously, we're going to talk about now, is off the yes. scale for contamination. Tens of thousands of bugs on one Absolutely. swab. Absolutely. Is this normal? It's not. Well, it's normal if you never wash it. If it's, it'll be stinky. It'll be absolutely rank. Reeking. It mm. will be, you know, the second that starts to smell, that means the bacteria are there. They're multiplying all the time. Ah. And in humid, ah. moist conditions, it's ideal. That's the swab. Well, yes. What's that? Is that the bacteria? Yes, they're all growing. I don't know what that is, obviously, but you, they're, is this familiar to you? They're boiling away, they're cooking very nicely. That is on the dishcloth. You can't see it, but by God, you can smell it. OK. But so... All those people, and the thing is, with a dishcloth, you simply put it in the sink at night, a little bowl, at the yes. end of the night. Right. One cap of bleach, hot water, Bit washing up liquid, it's clean in the morning. Oh, or if you've got a dishwasher, throw it in there. This is good stuff, because mm. the thing about bleach is, there's a common misconception about bleach, isn't there? 
that, oh, if bleach is there, because uh, I'm a bit scared about bleach. If bleach is there, then, it, then you know, you, it'll poison you or whatever. Is bleach, is bleach is a good thing? I it's said, a disinfectant. I said a capful. Mm. People put a Tiny cupful. Bit, yeah. A capful, not a cupful. They overuse the bleach. Mm -hmm. And if you've got that level of bacteria, you need the bleach to okay. kill it. We see the problems. I need to know the solutions. What do they need to do apart from the bleach? They need to get off their fat duffers exactly. and do something. <laughs> exactly. All they need is hot soapy water, a tiny little bit of bleach and a bit of elbow grease. Brilliant. That's what they need. Lady and where's the undies? Never mind. They're yes. not getting me off. I have not seen a bra and knickers <laughs> drying yet. <laughs> Are they not changing their doobie doobies? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what we need you to find out. Right. You are going. Well, it was going to be grind watch, but you know what? It's going to be doobie doobie watch. <laughs> we have here our trusty a lot of capes. I, I might add some beautiful capes. Excellent. Here. Excellent. And Excellent. very clean. Ladies, you're off to the camera. Marvellous. For now, Kim and Aggie, everyone. Woo! Thank you. Oh, you look wonderful. Thank you. Colin Mark, right, we'll Woo! catch up with you later on. And they're off. <laughs> Still to come, Dr. Funky Bavour. It tells us how the housemates uh, have scored in our IQ test and I get the lads round to discuss the latest male additions to the house. Whilst we're away, here's a bit of humour for you. Laughter not guaranteed. What do you call a man with a seagull on his head? <laughs> what do you call a man with a seagull on his head? Cliff! <laughs> Stupid. <sighs> Welcome back to Big Brother's Little Bell. I hope very well. It's day 19, time is 1.25. Now, Friday night was most definitely one for the ladies, right? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, when Big Brother delivered four packages of mailers into the Big Brother house, as always, our cameras are there catching the last moments of freedom. Take a look at this. I smell new blood. I've watched every series, so I'm a fan of the show. In all honesty, I, I don't want to play down the feeling that it, that it gives you to be a housemate because there's probably hundreds of thousands of people that have gone for it and I've beaten them all. So it's no small thing. I feel pretty good about it. It's probably one of the biggest things I've ever done. I've seen women that haven't spoken to any because of the place I've been hiding in. So I'm quite keen to reconnect with the women. The things I'm going to miss from the normal world is obviously family and friends. I'm feeling quite calm at the moment. I don't know whether it's a normal feeling at this stage. I don't know whether it's just going to hit me like a big bang. Billy, man enough for you? Why not try this one for size? I'm doing this because I'm an egomaniac. I can't resist the idea of millions of people having the chance to see what an idiot I am. I'm going to miss, obviously, my family. I'm absolutely missing my mobile phone. Uh, my hands don't know what to do with themselves. I don't know what other people are going to think of me. I haven't got a clue. And the people I'm dreading meeting in that house is anybody without a sense of humour, opinionated but ignorant people. And I guess I might be one of those. I just don't like meeting other ones. Short of that, really, I'm up for anything. I don't think there's anybody who's ever been more ready than me. Let's do it. moment I'm feeling quite apprehensive. I'm obviously nervous, but I've never felt so calm about anything my whole life. I feel strangely at ease. I consider myself quite a well-rounded character. Way obviously it'd be nice to see Bonnie Lasses in there. I would quite fancy myself as a bit of a ladies' man. A lot of us would, uh, would beg to differ. I have various reasons for going in there. Life experience. It'd be nice to make my family proud. I suppose that's the biggest reason. This is the biggest day of my life. I think the Big Brother house is ready for whatever people throw at it. Whether they're ready for us or not, they'll not forget us. My mind's a racing. I would like to say a thousand miles an hour, but it's probably going about 40. Oh, no! Look at that! Oh, cheers, pal. All the best to you. Yeah. Um, OK, so that's nine women, six men. I think we should even up the score teams a bit more. I love this, I've always watched me brother. This experience is like the biggest thing that's ever happened in my life. I'm a little bit nervous because there's going to be a crowd there 
and like they both thought, I'm wearing my old school uniform as well. <laughs> I'm going to look like such a loser. Why am I doing this? Because, I don't know, like, I just thought to myself, I'm 19, how many 19 year olds have this experience and gained a few brother ass? Just all the girls I'm, I'm into, are just game girls. That's a sad I'm a bit of a ladies' man, but in honesty, <laughs> I get more rejections than I do get acceptance. It, it has always been my biggest dream to gain a big brother house. The fact that I am now, it's just like, blows my head apart. Like. Where do I get myself into? <laughs> So now, as it's Father's Day today, we thought we'd gather uh, together some of the mail, F and F, uh, belonging to our new housemates, have a bit of a lads' lunch to celebrate all things masculine. Sound good, audience? <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. So, here we have Stephen's best friend, Liam. Get in there, son! We have uh, Lee's, uh, Lee Bryan's best friend. Oosh. There we go. We have uh, Baz, Billy's brother. That's that, Baz. And we have David Johnson's friend. Ooh, Boys, uh, I don't know about you, but whenever I get my mates around, I'm not really a big beer fan, cos uh, we're on television, so I always hang out and like to drink some ginger beer. Uh, you want some ginger beer there, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. who needs real beer when, don't get out much. when on daytime telly we can have ginger beer? Lovely, yeah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> quite cut it out. <laughs> so, here's the deal. You know they had a task um, last week in the house where they picked up pork pies and answered questions. That's pretty much what we're going to do. So, uh, first things first. Stephen, tell us something we don't know about your housemate that's suitable for daytime television. Yeah, um, he's a really big Harry Potter fan. He's been there every night, midnight, for the Harry Potter books coming out. Really? He's read them all through. <laughs> oh, yes. Are you sure? Oh, I'm positive. The big guy? Yeah. Really? Yes. Does he like the movies as well? Um, he thinks the movies spoil the books a little bit, oh. but it doesn't put him off going to see them. <laughs> no tickets to the premiere for him. <laughs> um, OK, right, what have we got next? Um, Oi. <laughs> I'm not joking, I'll have you. <laughs> Which of the ladies is his type, Brian? I'd have to say one of the twins. Really? Yeah, but I'm a, I'm a little bit worried about Charlie, him and Charlie, because I don't like Charlie. Do you not? No, I don't think... She's not good for him. Do you all. think Charlie's going to get the old talons in there? She'll try to, yeah, but it'll, it'll work her out. Like, when he came through, she was all over she, Yeah, that's what I was worried they, about, yeah. They obviously met at auditions or something. I, she I said, think, oh, I, met I think they did. And, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. they did. But, okay. yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Out of the twins, which are you going for? Sam or Amanda? I think the same, didn't I? Well, <laughs> <laughs> interestingly enough, Sam has a rounder face and a more piggy nose, okay. and Amanda has a longer face and wears more makeup. We did an item on the show the other day. So we'll go with Amanda, yeah. Yeah? We'll go with Amanda. You go with yeah. Amanda. Why not? Why not? Fair enough. OK, brilliant stuff. OK. Baz, yes. describe your housemate in three words. Oh, um, intelligent, funny, and I'm gonna have to say a little bit arrogant, aren't I? Okay. Well, the thing is, he's been a bit of an enigma since he's gone in the house, hasn't right. he? Hasn't yeah, I, I haven't bit. really seen that much of him. So, just sell him to us a little bit, because I. Um, well, he's quite reserved, and all you've seen is sort of like one side of him so far. Mm. So, as it sort of progresses next few days and he settles, he will come into his element a little bit, and you'll start seeing his little wise cracks. And uh, he's basically really, really honest person. So. Yeah. If he's uh, if he doesn't if he likes someone, he'll spend a lot of time with them, you know, pretty much all the time. Sure. And if he doesn't like somebody, he'll make it pretty much knowledge that he doesn't like. How's this ginger beer working out for you, boys? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, oh, it's lovely. lovely. Yeah, we all love ginger beer. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, much better, real beer. Um, okay. Uh, what is his worst habit, David? He's uh, he's quite fastidious. He can be very tidy. I think that might. Oh my word! He's come yeah. to the wrong house. So that could be a problem. <laughs> But he doesn't have that many habits, bad habits. He's generally a great bloke. OK, wh what do you think um, the age gap? Do you think that will be a problem at all? It, not necessarily because he can't communicate with him, but uh, as, uh, as Leslie found, it's, it's very difficult to bridge that sometimes if they don't want to converse. Jonathan's got friends of, of all ages. I mean, it really has. He's a wide diverse of friends. But on top of that, he's also done a lot of things with, with youth. I mean, one of his companies, he's um, chairman of the management company that uh, runs the Kaiser Chiefs and Franz Ferdinand. Mm. So, you know, he's very, he's very aware of, the, uh, of, of youth. Yeah. He's, he's good, he can mix with most people. Were you surprised he wanted to go in there? I was a bit surprised, but they're not. I mean, this is one of these sort of people that's been very successful in his life. He's achieved everything he's wanted to do. So this is something else whereby he can look and say, right, could I do this? Could I win it? Yeah. I think that's, that's what he's going for. Mm. OK, brilliant. Boys, thanks a lot. Lovely to meet you. No doubt we'll seeing you very soon. For now, F and F, everyone! <laughs> 
Now, taking this ginger beer with me. Now, after watching your housemates for 19 days, you could be forgiven at thinking some of them aren't the brightest sparks in the box. Joining us now to see if there's any truth in that salacious rumour and to separate the Mensa from the no censor. Oh, you're there, that's nice. Uh, please welcome clinical psychologist Dr. Funky Babu. <laughs> Hey, Dr. Funky, how are you? So I'm nice good. to see you. I'm good. Are you well? Yeah, very well. Oh, very man, well. it's so good for you to be here. Okay. I brought you over some fiery ginger beer, if that's your bag. No, it's not my thing. Dr. Funky, get that with the ginger! <laughs> so, first things first, Dr. Funky, you uh, carried out some uh, tests on the housemates, that's yeah? Right. That's Tell right. Tell us about them, would you? I mean, this is the test that we carried out, Dermot. Uh -huh. It's basically an IQ test and we were measuring three levels of ability. So your verbal ability, your numerical ability, and your spatial ability. So you do three tests, or you do...? No, it's one test, but okay. we're measuring those three types of abilities. And then, so, so you, the highest you can get is 119? Oh, definitely not. The highest you can get, some people can get 160. OK. Generally, if you get 130, you're a genius. And, and so to be, like, really stupid, but 160, are there 160 questions? You no, have to write, don't. So it's not like No, that. It's, okay. this particular test was only 40 questions but it sort of constitutes how high your IQ is. Nice touch. Be. OK. Um, does the IQ indicate common sense? Of course not. Some people... Right, that needs to be a hard time about it. <laughs> and I... Dr Funky's scoring me off tonight. I mean, some people have a really high IQ, but generally don't have common sense, okay. and vice versa. OK, we've got a chart here. Yes. We've put some of the housemates on there, cos we can't go through them all. OK. Um, just talk, just talk us through the, the sort of range here. I mean, how are we okay. looking? Is Generally, this kind of average intelligence? Average intelligence is from 90 to 109. Okay. So 50% of the population will generally have an IQ of that score. Then you get just as below average, and then you get borderline, and then you get quite low, and then vice versa, you go up to okay. high average. There's some surprises here, aren't there? There are some surprises, don't there? Okay, we're going to kick off with Jerry. Yes. Where does Jerry go? Jerry, he came in the top three. He scored 114. 114, everyone. <laughs> And he did very well spatially. Verbally, he's... What does spatially mean? It means, like, if I said to you, Dermot, go to iCare, buy me a flat pack and fix a table. I'd do that for you. Can you do that? Oh, I, I can't, probably can't do it, but I'd do it for you. Oh, thank you. But if you have a good spatial ability, mm -hmm. you'll be able to do that without the instructions. Do you remember, like, Krypton Factor, when they used to have That's to put right. stuff together? That's Was right. it like that? That's right. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I'm down with that. OK, so that's Jerry, that's yeah? That's Jerry, But yeah. he studies the classics, he's got three degrees. Would that have anything to do with it? No, because if you've got a high IQ, it doesn't mean you're going to have, do well in academic life. OK, OK. OK, uh, next we've got uh, one of the twins. That's Sam, yes. this is Amanda. Where's she scoring? This is really interesting because we know that Samantha scored um, 89. Right. However, Amanda scored 95. That's interesting. Now, generally speaking... Because they are the same person. Exactly. Identical twins, you think identical IQs, completely different. On the measures that they, they had to do, they got different answers. She done very well spatially. Uh -huh. However, Samantha did very well numerically. OK, cool. Uh, we've got Shawnee. What's Shawnee? Shawnee, like Jerry, he got 114. Really? And he did very well spatially, and he did very well numerically. OK. But verbally, it was just a bit lower. OK, then we've got Charlie. Where do you think Charlie's going, audience? <laughs> very low. Do you think? All right. Um, <laughs> where is Charlie going? Charlie, she scored 70 on the scale. Right. Now... But the thing about Charlie, though, is, like, here's the thing, though, when she argues... Yes. No, firstly, no-one ever gets a word in edgeways. Yeah. But secondly, she's brilliant at arguing. She, she, she knows her points immediately, and she hits them like that. She's a very diff right. difficult person to argue with. So I'm surprised that's so low. Well, I'm surprised, but what I noticed from her measure was that some of the questions that you'd expect her to get wrong, she got right. So I'm wondering whether she was actually concentrating on the measure. OK. To maybe do she's probably again. too busy having an argument. Absolutely. Oh, I'm going to get that <laughs> um, We do have, I mean, I, you know, she's a great arguer, but the, we, we do kind of question uh, Charlie's common sense sometimes. Uh, and this might uh, give you some clue as to her IQ ability. Take a look at this. You know, um, New Zealand is in Finley in America. That's what I put, because I know it is in America. I got that one right, which I was quite proud of. Yeah, you'd be all right there, then. <laughs> New Zealand <laughs> is in America. But the poor two guys are sat there going, man, I've seen you on TV, and there's no way I'm telling you New Zealand is not in America. <laughs> OK, so we've got Shabnam. She's here with us. Yes. Shabnam, she scored 55 on the measure. But what I... I mean, no, let's take this seriously. No, it's not a problem. What I noticed with Shabnam... It is a problem, isn't it? I mean, it's really. not. No, 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 it's not. That is. That, for me, that constitutes a problem. No, no, it's not a problem. 
I wonder whether Shabman was a bit anxious about doing the test. Dr. Fuggy, you're so nice. That is I such a problem. Not, you can't <laughs> have a I think she might have been anxious about doing the test, which is why her score might have been low. OK. Mm. She would not say a bad word about anyone. Look at her. <laughs> Lastly, this is going to blow you away. Chanel, there's only one place left to go. Chanel. She scored the same as Jerry and Sean. Are you serious? Absolutely, Dermot. 114. But guess what? Chanel got the highest score on a numerical test. And there's one particular test on that score where only a genius would answer. No. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. But she thinks that, and I quote, bear with me, everyone. <laughs> is Holland a country? Is it in Belgium? <laughs> yeah. Well, That's an hour. She's got 114. She did. She did really well. Dr. Funky, it's lovely to have you with us. Thank, Thank you very you. much for Thank giving you. us a lovely little cornucopia of who's uh, who's smart and who's not. Thank you very much, Thank Dr. You. Funky, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, we'll be rejoining Kim and Aggie, who are standing by to expose crimes against hygiene in the house. There they are. Oh! Hey, they're checking out Billy Sixpack. Um, how you doing, girls? You're right. Just fine, thank you very much. Okay. Fine, you all look like you. you could get in the show, yeah. mind you. Okay. Brilliant. There's a lot of picking going on here. Dear Nasty Lord. pickings. <laughs> More of that after the break. Thank you very much, Kim and Aggie. Thank you, Dr. Funky. We'll see you in four. <laughs> Dodgy space hoggers. Oh. <laughs> Let's come up to have a chat. Budge. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's day 19, and the time is 1.44. Before the break, we sent Clean Queens, Kim and Aggie, off on Grime Watch. Let's go over to them now and see what the Blue Blazers is happening. What the Blue Blazers is happening. Well, we're watching Jonathan do his washing in the bath. Dude. Brilliant. Going at lightning and speed. I've got news Not. for you. He must have brought this in with him, because he's only been in a couple of days. He's got enough washing for the regiment here. <laughs> yeah, OK. Now, listen, is... The is, water's filthy. It is, but is that a good thing that he's done? Well, probably, but you know what? He's going so slowly. Oh, dear. So slowly. Productivity rate down. But, Definitely. But is the stuff that he's cleaning now clean? Or... We can't no, tell because it's black. We're hoping he's going to rinse. He's just wrung it out yeah, all the dirty soapy water. He's got to rinse. He hasn't rinsed yet. No, no, no. no. He's got to rinse. Well, I don't think... But he might have a little bit of a method going. We don't know yet because ah, okay, he's going so cool. slowly. No, no, he's walking. Hags, he's walking. Or what? But the colour of the water. If he takes it out now and just grinds, is that a bad thing? He may as well not oh, wash it yes. at all. He may as well not wash it at all. He Ladies, it in a, the dirty water. It's Oof. a pleasure having you with us. God bless you. Thank you. Godspeed. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, oh, OK, thanks. Kim and Aggie, everyone, come on. <laughs> Time now for Little Brother's big shout. Today's subject is our Shabman. <laughs> OK. First things first, we go to a web caller, which I love. It's Rachel in Surrey. Hello, Rachel. Hi, Dermot. Hi, Shabna. What have you got Hi. there, Rachel? Is that, is that a gerbil or a hamster or what? It's a guinea pig. Oh, what's his name? <laughs> it's Phoebe. Oh, I love guinea pigs. <laughs> what's your question? I would like to ask Shabna, what have you learned about yourself in the house? Good question. To be calmer, I was a real whirlwind before going into the house, and even though I'm still hyperactive, I've learned to calm down. Um, also, to have more patience and that I can go without chocolate for longer than I thought I could. <laughs> and how long can you go without chocolate now, do you think? I think a week. OK, wow. And I'm a chocolate really holic, but that will go out the window now that I'm back to my life and I can eat chocolate whenever I want. Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, guinea pig, foo foo, whatever your name is. Oh. Um, dear Shabna, if you were still in the house, which of the four new guys would you fancy and why? Sarah in Birmingham. Oh. I'd love to get to know all of them, but I think Liam's really cute. Liam's very, very cute. He's a cute guy. Yeah, okay. He's really nice. Kieran in Chippingham, are you there? Hello, Dermot. It's Karen, not Kieran. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, anyway, Karen. Hi, Shabnam. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Very quick question for you. Um, I know you touched on it with Dermot, but if you only went into BB to get a media deal, what do you actually want to do now, and who do you think would employ you, especially after coming across so shallow and asking BB if you left early, would you still get deals? I don't think I, I don't think I came across as shallow. If I did, then people perceived me wrong. I know I talk a lot and I talk and talk. Um, I don't know. I just want to enjoy all of the experience I'm having and just live it up. Really, life's so short that I want to embrace everything. Well, that might be so, but you did get voted out probably because of it. And as an employee, you didn't actually show any strength or a commitment because you actually wanted to leave after three days. But I stayed on. I stayed on and I was strong. The emotions in there go high and low and I started to miss a lot of things. Well, that was only because they kicked Emily out. 
Girls, oh, well, I've got to finish the show who now. Knows? Who knows? Who knows? Karen, thank you very much. Sorry. You should be on thank The Apprentice you. No, no, next no, year. Thank you very much. Thanks for thank today's you. guest. Thank you. That's her name. Uh, thank you very much. That's all for today. We are back tomorrow, 7.30 on E4. Don't forget to watch Big Brother on the couch tonight, 8, and the main show. We're going to play out with our animation uh, today. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Take care. God bless. Take care. Bye. Don't think I don't realize I'm going around the bend again. I can't do to see my friends again.